was a whole plethora of police for some reason. I don't think they like me talking at my camera, even though my hands are on the wheel right there, see? I'm not doing anything wrong. Somebody was over here, I was talking to them like that, and they wouldn't pull me over. So, I don't know, for some reason you get out of camera and people freak out. Turnbull Canyon is one of the most haunted, supposedly, canyons in all of Southern California. It's near Whittier, California. You know, there's some sketchy areas in the Whittier area. Uh, there's a lot of great places in Whittier. Uh, uh, supposedly it's a beautiful canyon to go hike and ride bikes and all that stuff i want to go just see it for myself but let me tell you what's in store in turnbull canyon plane crashes in the 30s murders bodies that have been found insane asylums if it's true i'm going to try to separate fact from fiction as i normally do try to tell you what is folklore and what is real what is true crime and where some of these legends come from out of this canyon. It is definitely a controversial canyon in that way, but a lot of people go up there and they just hike all the time and they never give it a second thought. But I can't go there without giving it a second thought and neither should you because a lot of stuff has happened. guys so we're in Turnbull Canyon I got my buddy Mikey here I didn't bring John Salami today he was shooting he was, I wanted him to sh video for me so I brought another New Jersey guy so <laughs> we have good eyes <laughs> he gotta have a PA guy and a Jersey guy so <laughs> some people wonder how this place got its name it all started with Robert Turnbull who arrived in California from Scotland in 1873. He was also known as the town drunk, unfortunately. And he came here to get involved with real estate. He had money-making goals on his mind. And the first purchase of land was over by the Macy uh, Street Bridge, right in downtown Los Angeles. Feeling great about himself, he got involved with city council and dug deeper and further into uh, the LA way of life. But he still was a, the town drunk. And eventually he purchased the uh, this Turnbull Canyon, which is an old Indian name that I can't pronounce myself. He thought it was great. He bought a sheep here. He, it had a natural uh, water system, running water, and it was a great piece of property. And eventually other people thought it was a great piece of property, so they started making offers on it. Nevertheless, he got an offer for $30,000 from the Quaker group, and he decided to take it. Well, he accepted their offer, and uh, next thing you know, they did all the contract, they did the paperwork. So it was, a, it was a closed deal. But the night before, he went out and got drunk once again and was found bludgeoned. He was murdered, incidentally, and... Um All right, so we're gonna do a little hiking up here and just see what is around here. I've been looking for gates of hell. I've been looking for the crash site. I haven't found it yet. So we're gonna take a walk up here and I don't know, just see what we can find. Nice little hike, it's muddy in certain spots, but it's not bad. I'll show you the trail. Whoa, it's easy to slip. You feel that? Oh yeah. We're gonna go on another, on the other side, which is downhill, but what goes down must come up. <laughs> so, <laughs> man, I should have brought a second pair of shoes. <laughs> Actually, I have uh, bicycle shoes, so. I think it probably flattens out up here. Shoes with spikes would work great. Hell yeah, soccer shoes. Golf shoes. 
There is a plethora of legends and true crime that surround Turnbull Canyon. The Native American tribes that inhabited the San Gabriel Valley referred to a canyon within the valley as Hutakanga, which means the dark place or the place of evil. The Spanish would force the natives who refused to convert to Christianity to spend several days in the Canyon of Evil. The east side of the San Gabriel Valley was named Rancho La Puenta by William Workman, who was a banker and land developer. In 1876, Workman was financially ruined, which led to a suicide four months later. So, between plane crashes, KKK meetings, ghosts, UFOs, bodies being dumped, suicides, and murder, Turnbull Canyon has its reputation for sure. However, what I can prove is the following. On April 18, 1952, a Robin Airlines flight from New York City to Burbank, California struck a ridge near Turnbull Canyon, causing the pilot to lose control and causing the plane to crash into a steep hillside. The plane exploded into flames and instantly killed all 29 on board. After the investigation was complete, the officials stated that the cause of the crash was due to pilot error. The investigation also discovered that the pilot of the plane was flying with a restricted medical certificate. I don't know where the plane crash was. Uh, that would be cool to find that out. I hear a plane now, hopefully it won't crash. Supposedly, there is a tree somewhere in the Turnbull Canyon that is referred to as the Hanging Tree. The story states that a man hanged himself on a branch of a tree and that the time and day of his death, you can see his ghost dangling from the branch. I don't know where that tree is located. I couldn't find it. And I wondered, did anything ever really happen as far as a hanging? Well, it turns out that it did. And I dug up this article about it. A 19-year-old Whittier man apparently hanged himself in the Turnbull Canyon area Sunday, police said. The man was found at about 2.30 p.m. He was reported missing by family members. A Whittier police officer spotted the man's abandoned pickup truck on Turnbull Canyon Road, and they brought police dogs to search for him. He was found hanging from a tree limb several hundred feet from his truck on a mountainside. It appeared that he used a strap from his truck to kill himself, and that he may have been motivated by an earlier fight with a girlfriend. Early in the morning on October 12, 2002, the body of Gloria Gaxi Iola. She was initially believed to be the victim of a hit and run, but police quickly determined that what actually happened was much more horrific. The body of the young woman was dragged behind a car for over four miles before being left on the side of the road. The murder seemed to be deeply personal, but the case was cold for years. Police worked on the case for five years without making an arrest, but finally, two men were arrested. They were tried and convicted of this heinous crime. got that drone going so it's a little noisy but so far this canyon looks like a beautiful canyon to me yeah this the drone landed straight down here don't hold on to the tumbleweed Don't fall, dude. <laughs> it's useless. Don't worry, though. Just checking the weeds. This is a very nice dead branch. Oh, yeah. That would have helped. Nah, yeah, no. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah, grab that one. That branch is a well, lot this better. This is also, uh, I don't want this to break and then suddenly goes down another 25 feet. Yeah. No, no, no. You don't want to fall. Okay, I'm going to turn this camera off so I can help you. No! <laughs> oh, I'm fine. You. Yeah. I'm fine. There we go. There we go. Bring it, man. Oh, shit. 
shit, one of the propellers are broken. Yeah, one broke off. Two broke off. Shit. That's all right, I've got other propellers. All right, well, Mikey was a hero here and ran down there and grabbed it. I'll tell you, if it would have dropped any further down, like, let me show you. It might have been a lot harder to get to. In fact, back it out. in fact, I don't even see any trails uh, going down that way. So in 2011, Francisco Rojas was convicted of first-degree murder and the killing of Claudia Taku Otsen, 41, whose body was dumped near Turnbale Canyon Road and Skyline Drive. A jogger reportedly found the body that was discovered about 10 feet down an embankment. The body may have been there for more than a week. The decomposition was pretty extensive. It appears animals removed some parts of her body. Rojas shot Claudia in the head, dumped the body, and fled to Mexico. The perpetrator, Rojas, was apprehended, arrested, and is serving a murder sentence now. So there was also a Christine Martinez, 20, of Bellflower, who sustained a four-inch laceration across her neck and numerous abrasions and head contusions when three El Monte men tied her up and beat her. Martinez was later untied and forced out of the car. One of the men then slit her throat and dumped her down the side of Turnbell Canyon Road. They left her for dead. The trio returned to the scene of the crime with shovel, rope, and gloves, presumably to dispose of the body, but Martinez managed to climb up a steep grade and seek help. Christine Martinez underwent surgery, who was in critical condition at the time, but she did live. She is also a mother. The three men were finally caught and sentenced to hefty prison terms. All right, so what I was saying before the crash was that so far, this just looks like a beautiful hiking canyon. <laughs> Doesn't, I mean, I see gorgeous houses. Well, you can't talk about Turnbull Canyon without talking about Hell's Gate, and then the depths and the brush of Turnbull Canyon lies Hell's Gate. Hell's Gate is between the intersections of Skyline Drive and Descending Drive. Now, I took a ride down there, and I didn't see much. I could drive back there, but there is so much around the internet about Hell's Gate. It's basically a set of old iron gates with vegetation growing around it. This is where, supposedly, there's a burned down asylum, and an asylum that tortured people and was closed many years ago. But there's no record of an asylum. There are plenty of videos about Hell's Gates on YouTube. sinister things that happened in Turnbull Canyon. I think that because of its history, there's just a lot surrounding it. But I really don't think, I don't get a bad feeling up here at all. Some people say, oh, they come up here and they get this bad feeling. Do you have a bad feeling? So far, nothing. I mean, I'm pretty intuitive and I just, that's downtown LA, isn't it? Yep. I don't know whether you can see that. Is Turnbull Canyon haunted? Maybe. It sure has the backstory to support it. But honestly, what is less spooky and quite frankly just plain sad is the true crime that has occurred in this area. There are hundreds of acres along the four-mile stretch, and it makes for a good go-to place for the sick and twisted to kill and dump bodies. But let's not forget, it's also a very beautiful place that has made many more smiles than frowns. However, the legends will always remain, and sadly, probably more unfriendly circumstances will happen from time to time. But the real question is, what don't we know about Turnbull Canyon? And will we ever truly know all of its dark secrets? I think that uh, some of the bottles that he drank out of are still laying here. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. All right, they're not still here. I want an original bottle from Mr. Turnbull. <laughs> Haunted bottle. Haunted in a bottle. Wow, you don't want me singing. <laughs>